Hey guys, it is Efren the Marketer and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to promote your business online, which you're probably searching because either you own a restaurant, you're a marketer, you just want to get your friends more business. If you don't know much about me, I do own GoLevelMarketing.com, which is a 15 plus employee business. And we currently do marketing all day, day in, day out. So we have a lot of clients from the restaurant industry all the way to real estate industry. Today, we're just going to talk about restaurants and how to go and build an audience and turn your audience into sales digitally online. One of the biggest things a lot of business owners or a lot of restaurant owners or a lot of marketers think that by dropping the price, they're able to sell more and not have to do anything else. And that sometimes is the case to go the easy route, but what happens when you put that sell over and over and over and over? Hey, buy two meals, get the third meal for free. Hey, buy two pizza, get the third pizza for free. At one point it comes redundant and it just kind of just like becomes this giant billboard that you pass down the street every single day. And then you're just kind of like, eh. I'm tired of it. In this game of the restaurant business, it's all about getting new customers as well, keeping your current customers. And something that I want to mention is when you drop the price, it's not always good, especially dealing with food. Sometimes I pay $10 for a steak and I think the value for that steak is overpriced. But I also paid $300 for a Wagyu steak and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. Well, it's like around 250 or something, not 300, but you get the drift. And one of the things that you have to do is build the value of your food. If you have the $10 steak and you're actually making really small thin margins, but the way you prepare it and things like that, it can bring up the value if you actually share how you make it. If there was like a long-term recipe that your mom used to make it because the recipe was brought down from your great, great, great grandparents. If you build the curiosity of that $10 steak, it could be w uh, worth way, way more. So I just want to mention that because a lot of times you don't necessarily have to bring down the price on product. A lot of people think as well, when they start creating a social media platform like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or anything like that, and they start posting pictures of certain food products, you're sometimes not really selling the product. You're just kind of taking pictures and kind of going about it. The best way to take the food pictures to post online, try to have your food connect with your audience. Meaning, you know, you post a picture of a plate, cool, but the plate doesn't, you can't really see, let's say the bacon on a cheeseburger, right? So if you have a bacon cheeseburger and you can't really see the bacon and you're trying to promote this bacon cheeseburger or build some kind of brand behind it. And if you, if you zoom in just enough on the picture where you can see the bacon drizzling that delicious oil <laughs> and you can see the little pops of oil about to pop and you get that cheese melted right onto the bacon. I promise you that picture will get people more hungry and think about you whenever they want a cheeseburger. One of the things why we were able to stay in business during COVID and a lot of our clients have still been opening their doors is because we sell the branding and not really worry about the sell. Meaning we focus on the branding of the company right? Kind of, I want to bring this up because it kind of relates to everything that we're, uh, that we're talking about. So I don't know if you guys know, Tesla released a tequila bottle worth $250,000. When Elon Musk or Tesla released that bottle, they quickly sold out of the tequila bottle, which again, cost $250,000, right? So imagine if you just had an Instagram where you were just focusing on sales, which a lot of businesses sometimes don't even have a logo or some kind of branding. And all they do is just like, you know, hey, let's buy this list and call this list. And again, in restaurants, hey, let's just open and sell Chinese food, which I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of Chinese places, uh, Chinese food places don't even have logos or a company name. They literally just say Chinese food on the, on the physical building. That's cool, but it's gonna get you to a certain point. When there's a recession or when there's limitations on your business, that will not get you that far unless you know the food is really delicious and has been operating for a while but most of the businesses have been opening from this year last year or the last three years and you haven't really built a good customer base 
then you will be struggling today. So building a brand, focus on building a brand, focus on building a brand, brand versus having to sell things on social media, which can get really confusing if you're a marketer and your client's like, hey, I want you to promote this flyer. Hey, I want you to promote this video promoting how we have a sale or promoting reservations. When they want things like that, you want to promote more food product pictures. So let's say a client or you want to promote a flyer, make sure you dropped three, four pictures of food before you drop the flyer right? You don't want to get redundant with so many flyers. That just kind of kills the algorithm with social media. No matter if you're on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, if you put flyer, 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 picture of food, flyer, 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 there's no way you're going to build a brand. You're focusing too much on sales. Meaning most of these restaurants out here in the real world have some kind of history behind. I can tell you uh, this place here locally named Carreta de Lili, where it sells, um, it sells like uh, Chos Tostitos and corn in a cup. It actually started off in a hot dog cart on 35th Avenue in Van Buren. If I was them, I would obviously focus on the, I would focus on the story on how they got started and how they wanted to make the best munchy food that there is. And that's something you got to focus on yourself is building that brand. Do they know why you built, why you want to sell cheeseburgers? Do they know why you want to sell um, your mom's recipe? every single day. Do they know the background story? Millennials love to support stories. You want to post every single day if possible. If you don't have someone to hire fully on for social media, then you definitely want to find somebody that has downtime or even the cashier or whatever, the servers, and take good pictures. But honestly, if you have the funds, try to hire somebody to be consistently posting pictures and flyers and just posting content building your brand online versus selling, and I guarantee you that will turn into sales eventually. And one last thing I kinda wanna talk to you guys about is data is king. Social media will build the brand, but the data will help you sell it. So, meaning, hey, join our weekly newsletter. Hey, join our weekly recipe. You want people opting in to some kind of thing, if it's for coupons, if it's for newsletters, or for special events, or anything like that. You want to start collecting some kind of database. If you have Yelp, you can obviously download that data. I would use that data like on Next Level SMS, or some kind of platform where you can repetitively send them a text message every two days or every week or two weeks and let them know, hey, we're currently open. Hey, we currently change our food menu. Hey, we have our new winter menu. That will help them stay engaged and stay have that curiosity of what's on the winter menu versus your summer menu. Remember, data is king, so make sure you start collecting that data so you can start marketing them directly to their phones but sometimes it's good to keep them updated. Obviously, you can't always be posting the food menu and the time hours on Instagram itself. You can, but obviously you would want to have a website where you can keep that maintained and updated. As well, you know, you definitely want to be on Google My Business, all these local citation websites like Yelp, Bing, I mean, anything that has to do with food, you want to be on that. Especially a lot of these places don't even charge. They have the premium packages, but you don't want to be on the premium. Just get the original you know, Yelp account, get the regular BBB account, get the regular Yellow Pages account, and just put your business up there. You guys will be so surprised how many people still use those platforms. All right, and I'm gonna end it here with this. If you're struggling with your customers or if you're struggling with your sales, if no one is really excited about your food when you deliver it to the table, if no one's really taking the pictures, try to get the, try to make your presentation or have that specific food menu on a restaurant menu where they would want to order it just to take a picture and then post it on Instagram. I can tell you, I personally, personally went on social media and I saw this cocktail that they delivered it in a teddy bear, a little glass teddy bear and it looked, it looked super cool. And it was down the street and I was like, hey, I told my, my fiance, I was like, hey, you wanna go and check out this place where they put cocktails in these different types of glasses. And it was pretty cool, I mean, the cocktail was good and the presentation was good. And guess what I did when the 
they brought out the cocktail. I obviously took a picture and posted it and tagged them. And what does that do? It brings curiosity down to the next person that follows me. So that is the best way to get more attention and promote online. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you need help building a website or anything like that, check out the links down below and uh, we can have somebody reach out to you if you still need more help. Don't forget to please hit that thumbs up down below and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and I'll see you next time.